I'm here to show you our Butterflies and Blooms collection from our Gemini Club. So we have got over 90 elements with beautiful butterflies, florals and all along that vintage feel. So let's dive in and have a look as to what you are going to get because it is jam packed full. Now what we have got is we have got stamp and die edibles. You've got the stamps and the dies all together that work and coordinate with each other. What we've also got is we've got our butterfly wishes. Now these are lovely sentiment stamps with some of your butterfly icon stamps all included 10 in that one. What we've then got is flutter by. This is a stamp and die. You've got three dies but then what you've also got on the back is three stamps that coordinate with the size of the dies. That's included. We've got one of the most beautiful butterfly vine. This one is a creator card, but it cuts in and it cuts out so many ways in which you can use that one. Big sizable die, that's included. We're even popping in a butterfly collage. This one here is a 5x7 stencil. Ink it, spritz it, emboss through it, do all your different techniques, that's included as well. Then we've got lovely sentiments. Now, you've got the word lovely in a die, but if you turn it over, you've got all of these sentiments such as hello, have a, to my, wishing you, birthday and friend that coordinate with that lovely die. That's included. What we've also then got is some of our postmarks. This one here is your pretty postcard. Now this is all stamp form, good sizable stamp with your individual icon stamps here for you to colour and layer. That's also included. Then we're going to give you the grand floral. Now this is actually a four piece. You've got two dies, but then what you've got is two sizable stamps as well. You've got the floral and you've got the leaves as well. That's included. What we're then going to give you is a beautiful ornate corner. This is a delicate butterfly corner, perfect for the corners of your cards, memory books, scrapbook pages, but it's there included for you. Then what about a 4x6 embossing folder? Look at the detail that you've got within that folder there. It is butterflies and blooms. Layer your ink, layer your die cuts, layer your stamps, or just emboss. Leave it as it is. That's absolutely beautiful. We're then going to give you an edgeable die. This one is your elegant butterfly border. Larger cards, small cards, top of the cards, side of your cards. But this is going to create that lovely, beautiful butterfly on the edge of the card. We are then going to give you little ditzy accessory dies. Now these are literally that. They are ditzy. Butterfly, floral, you've got some leaves as well. Just popping out the back of your flowers or your butterflies. Create a little wreath, whatever you want, that's included as well. Then we're going to be going on to our papers and card stocks. We have got gorgeous coloured linen card stock. Now we've got eight by eight in size. We've got deep navy, we've got cream, we've got lilac. Now you've got 18 sheets, you've got three colours and you're getting six of each. That's all included. And then look at these. These ones is your double sided papers, 24 sheets. You've got a whopping 12 designs and you're going to be getting three of each. Now, the layering's done for you, the inking's done for you, the composition's done for you, the texture looks done to you, although it's completely smooth, it's all done for you. It is matte, so if you wanted to come along and add extra ink, or you want to add extra spritz in ink, you can absolutely do that. Stamp it, emboss it, rip it, tear it, manipulate it, all of that you can absolutely do when it comes to these 24 printed papers that are double sided, 12 different designs and then you've got your two of each of those ones as well. Now whether you're going to be going in with your smaller cards, maybe you want to do your easel cards, side stepper cards, maybe you're going to come along and incorporate them with your scoreboards, your ultimate pros, you can absolutely do that. All of that is together in this beautiful elegant box which is all about butterflies and blooms 90 elements over 90 elements in total some of the ideas that you can then get creative with is your cards so easel cards where that beautiful frame the wings 
pop out. But then maybe you want to use that stamp with that edgeable. Go in with your alcohol inks. Maybe go in with your aqua pens. There's that beautiful postcard there. Again, it's all about layering. That texture looks done for you if you don't want to do any additional texture work. But then what about bringing in that stencil? Bringing in the stencil, inking it up, keeping it quite simple. And if that is what you want to do, and this is what you want to make, this is everything that you're going to need to make that card. Now when it comes to our Butterflies and Blooms collection from our Gemini Club, you can make gorgeous cards and projects such as this one here. Very simple to create, but boy, isn't it effective. And the first way that you're going to be using the stencils is to actually ink through them. So let's do that. What we're going to do is we're going to bring in our stencil here. Now this is the Butterfly Collage stencil that we've got. And I'm going to go in with some of the linen cardstock. Now this is the ivory cream linen cardstock that's within that collection. And I have already pre-cut this to four and a half by six and a half inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the stencil over the top for now. And then I'm going to come in with three water reactives. I'm going to come in with orange and I'm going to bring in pale fig. And I'm also going to bring in Sandstorm. I've got my blending tools for all of these ones as well for me to start blending. So I'm going to set these ones out the way for now. And the first one that I'm going to come in with is, of course, a little bit of orange. So I'm coming in with that orange there because I'm just going to then take the edges of this cardstock. Now you can either use a repositionable spray if you want, or you can hold it with your fingers, or even go in with your low tack tape and create a bit of a hinge at the top. Now the cardstock that I've cut is slightly smaller than the stencil, so that means we're going to get that beautiful colour, no matter what colour you choose to use, right to the very edge. So in actual fact, what I'm going to do is let's get all my ink pads open and ready to go so we can dot back and forwards from each of them. And then we're going to go and start, well, let's actually start with the sandstorm instead of our pale fig. So let's set them just to the side of me here. And I've got my blending tool. Now when it comes to my blending tool, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink up my actual dauber. So I'm just using the square ones. So what I'm then going to do as well is then I'm just going to come around the edges. Now, even although this is a sandstorm, at first you might think that there's not a lot of colour going on, but you will then be surprised actually how much colour you're going to find that just applies onto the cardstock. And with it being a linen cardstock, you're still going to get that beautiful texture, but with the ink coming through. So all that I'm doing is I'm going round the corners, round the edges, and this is just starting to build up a layer. So you might not necessarily by the end see the sandstorm around the edges, but it's just given that buildability when it comes to the colour. And then that's where I'm going to come along with my next one. So I'm going to go in now with that pale fig. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go in kind of to the central parts of the butterflies, and then I'm just going to start to ink up that we can see within the middle. Now, I'm not being overly specific in where I get my ink. If it goes over onto the wings, then that's absolutely fine because we're going to blend it all in together. But then going into the center once again of each of the butterflies. So the larger detailed butterflies, I'm just going to go in with my square blending tool you can use your circle ones, you can use your finger daubers, whatever one that you actually feel more comfortable with is absolutely fine. It's just about getting that ink on in some way or form depending on whichever blending tool you use. So we've gone in there into the centre of the butterflies. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to intensify that a little bit more, really, really focusing on the centre of the butterfly. And then even some of these small ones 
what we're going to do is we'll do a little bit of quick inking. We've got some script work there in the background that I'm just going to pick some of it up with as well, postage marks. And then what we can do is we can then move over into the orange. Now with the orange, what I'm going to do is, it is linen cardstock and it is your ivory cream. So therefore, what's not going to happen, it's not going to be a full on intense orange. However, what I do want to do is I want to avoid any of that extra striking orange colour that may bounce back. So I'm taking a lot of that excess orange off my actual blending tool and then I'm just going to go direct. So what is remaining, which is going to be a lighter form of the orange, I'm just going to then apply that into the edges of the wings of the butterflies. You can see here, crossing over from where I had the pale fig. So let's go into there and then we're just going to go work our way around finishing off the additional areas of the butterflies. Now of course down at the bottom I'm holding my stencil with my hand but it's been held at the top with my low tack tape. So let's go into all of these little bits here. So we can then work that one in down into the bottom building up that orange. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of pale fig once again and then start to blend that out. So what they'll do is then they'll start to blend together. You'll get that light orange tone, but then what you'll get is that crossover into the pale fig. It gives you kind of like a darker brown before it enhances into that light lilac, which is the pale fig. So once again, let's just go and blend these little bits out into here. Then I'm going to go back into now the sandstorm. So if I go in with the sandstorm and then I'm just going to layer up my blending tool with the ink and where we've got the little posters marks, I'm really going to go heavy handed into those components there. Same with the script work, really going to go quite heavy in there. Get that ink in. So script work, postage marks, we're going to go in and then I'm going to finish off that one down here you can see and then what's going to happen is I lift that one up I mean look at that isn't that absolutely beautiful so you can see so many of the layers coming together you can see how the orange has worked an absolute dream when it comes to the lilac it's also working into the actual uh, vintage feel of your butterflies and blooms and then you've got the script work you've got the posters mark you can see all the way through there and it can kind of give you that impression as well that vision that it's not even a stencil that could have been a printed piece of cardstock and then what I'm going to do to round off that edges once again I'm just going to go in maybe a little bit more heavier handed with the sandstorm and then just giving it that dark edge so still using the blending tool for this one so you can go round the edge and by doing it this way, you're giving it that, as I call it, the full stop edge because it's just ending at the card. It's giving you that block, that separation. But then what you can also do to really make it pop against your next layer is then go in with that same ink pad and then you can then just run it along the edge. So just run it along the edge just a few times. And then what that'll do, so if I bring in a piece of white card, you'll see it that bit better. So you see you've got that really, really fine detailed colour of the sandstorm and there's none there. So you've got a few different ways in which you want to edge your card. You can blend on like I've done. You can go around what I'm doing now or do both. Blend the sandstorm onto the cardstock and then give you that fine edge all the way around. So we're just holding it and then we're running our ink pad. It's not going to do any damage to your ink pad, so don't worry about that. It's just a nice way to round off that edge. And then that's all that I'm going to do with my background. So we've gone from a beautiful ivory cardstock that's linen and then we've decorated it ourselves using that stencil and three of the inks. So then what I'm going to do is for this collection, I do like to add a bit of black. And you might think, well, you've gone round the edge with that harshness of the sandstorm and then you've gone in and given it a black edge as well. It flows into each other. It works a dream. You should give it a shot, try it, see what you think. But then you've got that fine edge of the sandstorm that just works into your uh, black cardstock. And then when it comes to this layer, you'll see it's just a slither bigger in my matte and layer. So it's not a quarter of an inch, it's just a slither bigger. And then what I've also done is bringing in my card blank
that we've got here. So my card blank is five by seven, and then my pattern paper underneath here is just a fraction smaller. So in actual fact, it is, of course, as you will guess, four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So we're building up the layers. So I'm going to set that one to the side just for a moment, and then I'm going to come in with a piece of our multi-purpose cardstock. We're going to then come in with our flutter by stamping dies. And then we're going to come in with my stamping platform. And then I'm also going to come in with my stamping mat. So let's go in with our butterflies here. So I'm going to layer them together. Now I'm going to go on just underneath. And I'm going to leave a bit of space because we're going to come along and die cut them afterwards. Because you've got the dies to go with them. So let's pop our cardstock on. I'm going to come in with our alcohol proof. And I'm going to use the Noir Black for this one. So let's ink up. I'm just doing the two butterflies just now to show you. You've got the three of them. So I'm going to ink up here. Now you can stamp and cut, or then you can cut and stamp, whichever way you find uh, easier to do. And then in actual fact, let's just turn that butterfly around so I can then get a good coverage and then I can fill out my card. Let's just ink that one up again. And then let's go back. We're going to apply that onto our cardstock. So stamp that one out, give it a bit of pressure with the two butterflies. Then what we can do is then we can lift that one up. Then that gives us our beautiful two butterflies that we've got here. So I'm going to set that one to the side for now. And then I'm going to come in with some of our tri-blends. Now I'm going to go in with green turquoise blend. I'm going to go in with our purple blend. I'm going to go in with our antique pink blend. And I'm also going to go in with our pale pink shades. Now I'm not going to use all shades together, but what I am then going to do is I'm going to just uh, cherry pick some of the light tones. So let's go in, I'm going to put a piece of cardstock underneath here, and we'll colour one of these ones in just now. And we're going to start off with the green turquoise blend, and then I'm also then going to come in with, let's go in with our antique pink blend, both of which I'm only using the light tone of each of them. So let's go in with that light tone of our green turquoise. And then for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into the edge of the butterfly here. And then I'm going to come down the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same on that opposite side. So if we come into here, work our way down into the base. And then I'm going to jump over now to the antique pink blend. And once again, I'm going in with that lighter tone. And I'm going to fill in these couple of bits here. And then what I'm then going to start to do is just blend out ever so slightly, not far, just a little bit into that green turquoise. So that one, what we can do, blend that one out and blend that one out. Going to go back into that light tone. And then we're just going to finish off that once again, blend it out. Because it's alcohol based, it will blend into each other. And then that's all that I'm going to do with that one there. I'm not doing any additional colouring when uh, any of the other pens. But what I am going to do within this one here is let's go in with our purple blend. And then we're also going to go in with our pale pink shades. And then with this one, once again, I'm going to go in the light tone. And then I'm just going to come down the side here and then down the side here. And then we can then jump over to that light tone of the purple. And then I'm just going to finish that one off again. So no blending, no shading, no nothing. We're just going in with the light tones. It's going to work a treat with the backdrop of your stenciled linen cardstock, plus that pattern paper that's going to then peep out the side. I'm going to go back in with that pale fig shade. Once again, let's just blend that one out. Let's just blend that one out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the dies that you've got with them. Now, I've already done the smallest one. And that one, I used the same two colours that we've just used there. So let's take our actual dies here. What I can then do is come in with my low tack tape and then we're going to secure them. So let's move that out of the way for now. And then what we can do is line up the dies that are going to work perfectly around your butterflies. And then we can then tape them. We're then going to come along with our next one, which we're then just going to overlay. And once we've got them into position, tape them. 
Then we're going to bring in our plate. So let's bring in our Gemini plate. I'm going to set that one to the top that we can see here. And then it is our normal plate configuration. So it's our base cutting plate. It's our frosted shim, magnetic shim, and then our top plate. And then as I am only cup it, cutting, just at the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go so far and pause it, and then I'm going to reverse it because I don't need it to go all the way through because it's just that small part at the top of the cardstock. So as this one then comes out, what we can then do is remove these layers. We've then got our butterfly one, and then we've got our butterfly two, beautifully colored, beautifully cut, all ready to go. So then let's bring in our card and start to assemble it. So I've got these ones here. We're then gonna bring these layers in that we've already done. That's good to go. We've got our butterflies, including our tiny one that I've just done beforehand in the same way. That's good to go. And then I need to do my sentiment. So I've got a piece of our white multi-purpose cardstock. And then what I've also done is I've brought in our Butterfly Wishes stamp set. Because you've got 10 sentiment stamps in total in here that you can then choose from. So we've got Send and Love, we've got Say Strong, Spread, spread Your Wings and Fly. In the natural fact, let's go for Spread Your Wings and Fly. And then I'm going to bring this one back in with my stamping platform. I'm going to layer this one up into the middle. Now this would fit on your really small stamping platform, but as we can see, I'm just going to be using my six by six. Now I have cut my cardstock already to size, two inch by three inch. What you could do is stamp your sentiment and then cut it afterwards, or maybe use a nesting die. But I have, as I say, already cut it before. So let's ink up with my Noir Black Alcohol Proof. And then I'm going to come into position. I'm just going to line that one up. I'm going to hover. And then when I'm happy with the positioning, I can go in and then I can press. And the contrast between that purple mat as well as my white layer of cardstock, it means I get a good visual as to where I'm lining up in the center of my pre-cut layer. Spread your wings and fly. Absolutely beautiful when it comes to that sentiment. So let's set that there. What we're then going to do is we're going to go back in with Sandstorm. So bringing in our Sandstorm water reactive ink that we used earlier on. And then I'm going to go around the edges. So we're going to go right up to the edge and then we're going to blend over the top. So essentially we are kind of then covering our white cardstock with that Sandstorm. So we're just going to then ink up, layer up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process that I've done when it comes to that stenciled background. So what I can then do is come along and then we're going to give it that nice fine edge all the way round. So let's work that one all the way round. And then that's our sentiment good to go. So within that one, I've replicated this backdrop. And what I mean by that is my sentiment and then I've got my stencil. What I've then got is my black card that that's going to go on to. And then I've gone and done a black card that my sentiment's going to go on to. And then the only difference at this point is I would then come along and layer onto my pattern paper. This time I'm going to break it up with some of that ivory linen cardstock. And then that's going to follow through from your main image. So we've got them ones. And then the only thing that's left to do is to bring in a couple of layers because that back panel, what I want to do is I want to create a border strip. So let's come in with our guillotine. And I've uh, cherry picked one of the many designs that you've got. Now, when it comes to these papers, of course, you are going to be getting your 12 designs and two of each. So I've just picked one of them. And then for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this at two inches and then I'm going to cut it at seven inches. So I've got two by seven when it comes to that panel. And then what I'm going to do within this one here is I'm going to go in with my black layer. Now I want a very, very fine border. So what I like to do to make it easier for myself, I still go up a quarter of an inch. So let's cut that at two and a quarter. And then what I'm going to do is turn that around and I'm still going to cut this at seven because I want the height to be exactly the same. I only want my matting layer 
to be on the left and the right. Now, at this point, I don't want that quarter of an inch. So what I then do, and this is how I do it, make it easier for myself, I cut it to a quarter of an inch bigger, and then I just take off little slithers. So I do a little slither at a time. I then check that to see I'm going to do just a tiny little bit more, and I'm using the butt at the top of my guillotine as an aid to hold it into place, keeping it straight, cutting down, and then I'm pretty sure that that is going to be perfect for me, my little black matte and layer. And then, of course, we need to come in with a base layer, which is going to be my linen. So once again, let's go up a quarter of an inch. So let's go up to two and a half. And then I'm going to cut this at seven once again because I want the height to be exactly the same. And then what we can then do is you can always come along and have a look. So this one, my black, is just over that two inch mark. So let's come down to just over that two and a quarter to give me a little bit of a finer layer that we can see. And in actual fact, I am more than happy with that layer. Absolutely perfect. And then that's what's then going to sit over the top. And that's where we're ready to assemble our card. So let's bring all these layers in together. Let's bring in your choice of adhesive. So I'm going to go in with my tape runner. I'm going to use some of my foam pads just shortly for some of the other layers. So on the back of that stencil background, what we can then do is go in and pop that over the top. Now, if you are using your wet adhesive for this one, you can use your all-purpose, or if you want to use your tacky, you can do. I'm then going to work my way all the way around with my tape again. And then this time, you could cut out the centre of this one if you want to, so that you're not wasting it, because you can see we're going to be covering a lot of that. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it all into position. And then we can add our adhesive onto the back of that one all the way round with our tape. What I've then done is brought in my card blank once again. So that can then sit nicely over the top. So I've got lots of framework going on. So I've got my linen card that I've inked with my stencil. I've got my black matte and layer, which just makes that stand out even more. But then what we've got is we've got that little bit of pattern. It's kind of like the card fronts going, ah. You've got that hit with the black and then you've got that relaxation with that pattern just around the edge to where we can then come in with our strips. So we can then add our adhesive onto our strips. So the pattern, I'm going to go on with my tape runner. So that one, we can then go over here. Now with our cardstock, both the linen and the pattern, it is a matte cardstock, so it's uncoated. If you wanted to ink it and spritz it, go for it. You can do. I'm not for this one. We're just going to keep it all separate. This one, we're going to go in and layer that one up. And then we're going to go in now with some foam pads and we're going to lift this one up with our foam pads. These are three millimeter foam pads if anyone's wanting to use the same depth. So let's pop that one on there, there and there. Make sure you create good stability on the back because you want to make sure that you're going to get a nice even layer. Hence why I've put these two here. So taking these ones off, alternatively you can be using your glue gel. But then let's come into this one. And then because I've cut my strip to seven inches, it's the exact same height as my card. So therefore, it's going to break up the layers even more. So you've got your frame that comes in on your card blank, but then you've got your strip that extends it. So we can then come in with spread your wings and fly. So what we can do within this one is add our tape once again. We're going to then add that to our black layer. And the black layer, it's optional. You might want to eliminate it completely. You might want to use a dark gray, maybe a navy, maybe a craft. That would look really nice as well, your deep craft card. So that's up to you. But then we can come into this layer here. Now these layers, I done exactly the same way as to how I showed you to do the panel. So I cut them to a quarter of an inch bigger and then just trimmed with my guillotine. That for me is the easiest way. Let's go in with another three mil foam pad. Now this one, I'm going to offset it here. So what I'm going to do is just put one, 
to the left hand side, that can then sit here. And then see how you've got, because we've got our linen cardstock, one half of the linen cardstock sits proud on the pattern paper. The other one, it kind of purposely disappears into that background because you've got that linen on that backdrop that you've inked up. So it all works. It's a little bit of play and trickery on the eyes. And then let's come in with our three butterflies here. So we're going to go one, two, and then three. And then for this one, what I'm going to do is let's go in with another foam pad. But this one, I'm going to go in with a shallower foam pad. And then I'm just going to cut a couple of strips here. So these ones are about two millimetres. So let's add that one onto the base there. Let's take my next one. That's then going to come down to there. And then we can take our last one as well. I'm just going to snip a little bit off of this one because it's a wee bit long. So let's take my scissors and then just cut a little bit. And that's a good thing. With your larger foam pads, you can snip them down. Although if you've got the small ones, they're going to work a treat without having to do any cutting. So let's take all three of these ones and then what to do before you then pop them into place, position them as to where you want. So have a look, have a play about. So that one can go into there. Maybe that one can go down there. Or maybe you want to have a little cluster together. So that can go there. That can go there. And then that one can go there, which I'm going to do because I've got kind of the largest into the medium, into the small. And when I'm positioning butterflies, I have one going one way, I have one going the other way, and then that last one I'll have going back in to that first stance of the first one. So let's take my backing off here. So that can sit there, and then I'm going to lift the wings up, take the backing off the next foam pad, and then that one once again can go into here, and then lift, and then last, but by no means least, we're going to take our last one. That one can go into there. Now you have the option, if you choose to do so, and that is gems, pearls, embellishments, ribbons, whatever you like, or you can leave it as it is. And we've got our beautiful five by seven card where we've used a number of layers from our Butterflies and Blooms collection, which is of course from our Gemini Club. The Butterflies and Blooms collection from the Gemini Club is filled with so many options when it comes to the craftability. You've got your edgeable dies, you've got dies, you've got stamps, you've got your stencils, you've got your card, you've got your paper, and you've got the most beautiful 2D embossing folder. And we're going to create an actual focal point with the folder but then we're going to do a little bit of cutting out as well. Now we're going to do that one just shortly. So what we are going to do to start with is a little bit of our own background when it comes to inking. So I've gone in with a piece of our watercolour card. So I have done this to three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then I'm going to go in with my Midnight and my Noir Black. Now both of these ones here are your water reactive ink pads. So let's go in with the midnight to start with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these ones onto my blending tools. In actual fact, I don't even need that for the blending tool. What I do need though, is I need my noir, my midnight. I need some water that I've got here. And then I've got a paintbrush ready to go. So what I can then do is take my midnight and then I'm going to come in with the ink and then all that I'm going to do is take the excess off my glass mat and then I'm just going to swirl about in the center. So we're just going to do a nice little swirl and that's it. That's all that I'm going to do. And that's your fat. Let's, let's add a little bit more depth in the middle. That swirling action all the way around. These lines that you've got, don't worry about it because it's going to look super cool and effective against that backdrop later. So now that I've gone in with that one, 
let's take a deeper paintbrush. And what I'm going to do with this one is dip it in my water here, and then I'm just going to tap. So I'm just going to tap my water onto the back, and then we're just doing that back of the paintbrush, and then we're just going to tap that on. Tap it to the sides, the watercolour cards, so it's perfect for that one. And then all that I'm going to do is just leave that for now. So we can then set that one to the side just for a second. So I can move these ones out the way, bringing in the Noir Black. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to add a little bit of that one onto my glass mat. So that's there ready for me to come to just in a second with this paintbrush. So if I bring this one back in here, so I'm going to bring in some kitchen roll or you know, tissue paper or blue roll or paper towel, whatever it is that you're going to be using. And then I'm just going to dab any of that excess water off of my background that I've created. So I'm going to take that one off and then we've got that beautiful effect. I love that effect. So you've got that faux bleach effect, but because we've gone in and we've created that swirls as well with the blending pad, you've got that, it's kind of like a space sort of look as if you're looking at the sky. So now that we've got that one ready, what we're going to do is bring in our paintbrush and water, and I'm going to go into my Noir Black, and then what I'm going to do once again, on the back of my finger, I'm just going to tap. So I'm just going to tap that, and then I'm just going to leave that now. I'm not going to do any more to that one. What I can then just do for now is I'm just going to clean up my area. Now you can either heat set that with your heat tool or you can leave it to dry naturally. Now if you use a heat tool, it will start to bend and buckle. All that you need to do is just apply heat to the back, that'll flatten it out. But if you do leave it to dry naturally, then it's going to dry relatively flat. So that being said, what we can then do is we can then come in now to our folder. So I'm going to come in with the folder. I'm then going to come in now with another piece of my watercolour cardstock. Now the folder itself, four by six, my cardstock is a little bit smaller than that, but doesn't need to be because we're actually going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So I'm popping the layers in, and then when it comes to your embossing for your Gemini 2, you're going to need your base plate, you've got your folder, and then you're also going to come in with your top plate as well. That's the only two that you're going to need. So what we can do is just line these ones up and then we're just going to feed that in. Now when it comes to any embossing folders, for me personally, I never do the pause and reverse. I just let that go through in that first run. And then as that one then comes out, what we've then got, and you know, it will be a little bit harder to see at first, but what we've got is that embossed design on your watercolour card, so you can just see that there, which looks absolutely super cool. Looks really, really elegant. It looks quite sophisticated as well. So what I'm then going to do is, before we do any fussy cutting, I'm going to come in with some of my Tri Aqua pens. So these are our Aqua, Tricolour Aqua. So I'm going to bring in a few of these ones. So I'm going to be using my Tulip, which is this side here. And then I'm also going to be using my Meadow, which is in the middle just here. And then these ones will sit to the side for now. So let's bring back in our water and our paintbrush. So for the meadow, I'm just going to scribble onto my glass mat. And then we're going to do the same for the tulip. And we're going to scribble. And then what we can then do is if I bring in another bit of roll here, I'm just going to take a really thin paintbrush and then I'm just going to dab that in at the water. I'm going to take some of that excess off and then what I'm going to do, now I would never do this in midair, but I am just going to twist and turn it so hopefully it's going to be a little bit easier for you to see as I apply. What I'm doing is I'm going into each of these petals. So I'm picking up some of that colour and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and in that emboss line, what I'm doing is I'm colouring inside. So I'm going in with a little bit of the colour to start with and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to blend that out. So if I blend that one out you've got that perfect shot on your screen right now. So let's go back in just a tiny little bit of water and then we're just going to go and pick that up. Now we're going to go into that central part of the petal where it would be quite dark. Take some of that excess colour off and then I'm just going to make sure I've got my point to my 
paintbrush and blend that out. Now I want that to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to leave it a moment just to let that water soak into the cardstock and semi-set. But what we can do in that meantime, let's go back in with some more. So this is still the tulip that I'm using. Let's go in with that tulip. And then I'm taking some of that excess off. And then we're just going to pull that colour out because we've still got our damp paintbrush. So I can then move on into that next one. So we can just go section by section. With this being your tricolour aqua, this is a lot more forgiving. So if you wanted to do larger sections at a time, you could do. So, you know, doing what I tend to say not to do with your alcohol colouring. That I ask you to do in little sections. Your water colouring with your tricolour aqua, you can come along and do bigger section because you've got that movability when it comes to the ink. So let's go into another one here. So I'll do a couple of petals just now. So wherever I feel would be that darker shade of the petal, I'm just going to go in, take that excess off, and then blend it out. And then if I go back to here, if I want more of a deeper tone, I can then at this point go back in and then add that fine detail into that deeper tone. We could do the same if I wanted to within this one here. And essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be following the embossed detail lines. That's a good indication as to where you're going to put that darker shade. So each time we're just going to go in, letting the initial layers start to set and dry slightly before coming in with more of a heavier colour. So this is where you're seeing we're already getting quite a few tones of your tulip. So if I then just take all that excess colour off for now, let's go in now with our meadow. So I'm going to go down into here, pick a little bit of water, take the excess off, pick the colour up, and then what we're going to do is do some brush colouring down into here. Wipe the excess off, pull that colour out towards the base of the petal. Then what I'm actually going to do as well is let's go in with, let's go in with a little bit of bud green. And then this one is when you can then start to create more shades. Because we're going to go in with that bud green down into here. And then the emboss line, it's holding in the ink. So whereas usually you might find it will bleed out, that emboss line is holding it into place. It's letting you get that achievement that you want when it comes to your water colouring. And then once again, blend that one out. So then you're going to be getting that beautiful feel, that beautiful look when it comes to the leaf. So let's do just another one here. So let's pick up some water in with the meadow. So that initial layer you can go in and just do a nice wash of colour. I'm then just going to take that excess off. Let's go in with a bit of that bud green. So again, let's go into the base there. I'm going to come down the central vein of the flower leaf. Take that excess off blend it out and then you can carry on going all the way around. Let's do a little bit of the butterfly before we move on. So what I'm going to do with the butterfly is let's go in with our teal and then what we can also then do is we're going to go in with our aquamarine which is here. So a little bit more of a darker tone and then essentially I'm just going to be doing exactly the same. So let's go in with that teal here and then when it comes to the butterfly I'm just going to colour and then I'm just pulling that colour in from the side, take that excess off and then I'm just pulling away from itself. And as I said before, I would always do this flat. I'm just lifting it up at an angle to make it easier for you to see at home. But we can then just pull all that away to the side, pick up some of that aquamarine. What we can then do is then just work that in. You can go into some of these little detail bits. If you want to work around the embossed detail, you can do. Take that excess off, and then we can then pull all of that out. Now, all of that flower head you would come along and do when it comes to your actual uh, tulip. You would do your meadow with all of the flower leaves with the bud green, and then the butterfly you can then do with your teal and aquamarine. Then at this point, once you've coloured it all in, or you can do the cutting first that I'm away to show you, what you're going to do is you're then just going to follow the embossed outline all the way around. Now, having that embossed outline, what that's also giving you is a guide. So you can either cut all the way up, 
or you can leave yourself a little bit of a border. At first, you might be a little bit daunted by doing this, but please do give it a shot because as I say, that barrier of that embossed line, that's exactly what it's doing. It's giving you a barrier. It's giving you a leading edge for you to then rest the initial side of your scissors up against, and then you've got that free flow all the way round. So you can keep going all the way round. Now there's a few bits and pieces in here that you can cut into. Now that's something else that's optional. However, it's worthwhile cutting into here because this is where that background is going to come into play. So what I will do is let's just show you that one because you have got little channels that you can go into. So you can go in, you can then just flow all the way round and then if you find it easier to then take out a chunk of that middle, you can do. But following that outline gives you that barrier for you to then rest your scissors onto. And then what you can then do is continue all the way around. You know, the only really part that's intricate is the central part. The rest of it is just quite a smooth but flowing outline. Once you've then done all of that, let me just take all of this off. What you've then got is this. Look at that. Now, when it comes to the central of the flower and the butterfly, I did use our additional one, which was the gold. So this is your gold tricolour aqua pens for the centre. But I followed exactly as I said to you there a moment ago, fussy cut into all those little bits and pieces there that you can see in the leaves. All that's optional, but it gives you that ability to do that. Let's set that one to the side. And then what we're going to do is let's bring in a piece of that navy blue. So that is your linen cardstock from the collection. Let's go in with our lovely sentiment. So let's go in with that lovely die. And then I'm just going to pop that one into place. So within this one here, I'm just going to use my low tack tape to secure that down. We're going to bring in our plate. So we're going to bring in our base cut and plate. Let's go in with our frosted, our magnetic, and then our top plate. For this one, we're just going to run that one in. Let the Gemini 2 do its thing. Because it's right at the top of the plate, let's just leave it a second. Pause it, reverse it, and then that just means it's giving you more scope having that Gemini 2, even with the small dies there, that pause, that reverse. You don't have to go all the way through. You can just reverse it out. So if we then take that die out, what we've got is a lovely die. A lovely die cut that says exactly that, lovely. So we can set that one to the side. And then all that I'm going to do here is, I have done, I'm going to do one of these ones, but we've got Hello Friend. So this is the stamp sets that come within that lovely die. So what I'm going to do is let's take the Hello and I'm going to take in another little piece of that navy cardstock. So I'm going to set that one out of the way for now. What I'm going to do, pop that one on. Now this would be really, really easy for your 4x4 stamping platform, but as it is, I am just going to be using the large one. Let's go in with our Spectrum Noir Translucent Clear ink pad. What we can then do is go into place, hover, and then when you're happy, press. What we'll then have is a watermark with that hello, so we can just see that shine and away there. There we go. So then what I'm going to do for this one, let's come in with some white embossing powder. So I've got the white here. Sprinkle that one over the top. And then what we can do is remove that one out of the way. Take that all out of the way there. And then what I'm going to do, this one here, if you use an anti-static bag, that would mean that you'll get no powder on that surrounding edge, only on that sentiment. With it being quite a natural feel collection with the butterflies, the blooms, that kind of organic feel, as I've said a few times, I'm going to leave some of those little sprinkles. What I am going to do though, is where I've got my little finger mark there with the oils on my finger, I'm just going to use a brush, take away that excess powder, but all the rest, that's powder that's sprinkled to the side, I'm going to leave that on. We're going to leave it because it's going to add to the effect. And then we're going to go in with our heat tool. 
So bringing in our heat tool up to temperature, because it's a small piece so I don't catch my fingers with the heat tool, what I'm going to do is hold it down and then I'm going to start at the O and then as that starts to melt, straight away you've then got hello, which is, there we go, come on, there we go, all done, that hello. So you've got hello, you've then got lovely, and then I've done the other one beforehand, which is friend. So we've got hello, lovely friend, and I've done that in the exact same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this one. The only reason I've brought that one in is because I've already got a foam pad on the back just to make it a bit easier for me. And then we can start to assemble this card now. So what we're going to do is let's bring in our A5 card. So that one there, to be precise, five and three quarters by eight inches. Now, I've gone in with one of the pattern papers here. Now, this one I have cut to five and a quarter to seven and a half. I've already got my tape on here that I'm ready to go. This is just our double-sided tissue tape. This is then going to go onto a layer of our black matte cardstock. And then we're just going to hover. And then we're just going to place that over the top. Now, the black matte cardstock is just a fine matte and layer border. So I made that layer a quarter of an inch bigger and then I trimmed a few millimetres off. We can then take the backing off and then come into a piece of that navy card. And the navy card was exactly the same. Cut that to a quarter of an inch bigger and then trimmed a few mils off. And then what we can then do is then finish this layer by popping it onto our card blank. Into place. Over the top hold it in and then that is now our base ready to start to assemble. Let's bring in that background that we've already cut and I have gone in and I've done a matte and layer for the black cardstock for it to sit behind. So I'm going to bring in my tape runner, work that one all the way around the edges. I always like to put a little bit of tape in that central part as well. So we can then follow round and then into the centre. That's going to sit over the top and then this is where we're pulling in those black splatters that we've done into the black layers. I've got my tape on the back there. We can then add that to another layer of our navy linen. That can then sit over the top. That one is a quarter of an inch bigger. Now I've already got my foam pads on the back here. So this one is going to create lots of lift. Now, this is the layer that you may choose to keep completely flat because we're also going to add foam pads to the back of our watercolour floral. That's your decision. But what we can do is press that one into the middle and then we're going to come in with our floral design. This is what I mean by if you have the confidence and patience to go into all these little bits, it's worthwhile doing because you can see that background that you've created. And I've popped my foam pads into the central parts of the main design. I've not worried about going to the edge of my cut layer because I want to have all about that movement that I like to have. So this one, we can take that layer off. This one can then hover over the top. When we're happy with that one, we can press that into place. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to come in with that lovely die cut sentiment. I'm then going to come in with some of our glue. That one, I'm just going to apply a little bit of the glue to the back here. So as we've got that flow, work our way around, picking up the detail of the back of the die cut with your glue. So we can then just sketch over the back there. Once you've got enough, we can then go in to the center. And now that navy against that tulip really makes it pop. So we can then press that one in. What I'm just going to do is add just a little bit more to the base here for my Y to sit onto. And then what we can then do is then position our stamps. So hello friend, happy with that positioning. So let's take the back off of these ones. That one can then sit into there. And then let's just lift that one. Let's go in with friend. That one can go into there, press that in, 
And then there we go. We've got our watercolor card where we have done our embossing with the embossing folder, used our tricolor aquas, used some water reactive to do a background, but we've used the stamps included, the sentiment die included to work with the stamp sentiments. We've used our linen card, we've used our pattern papers as well as a few different embellishment stamps from that set, which is another idea that you can get creative with. You can have your own creative play with this sort of card, this style of card, all from the Butterfly and Blooms, which is from the Gemini Club. the butterfly and bloom collection we've got gorgeous layers that we can start to incorporate with your cards and projects one of the layers is a beautiful edible when it comes to the butterflies and that's what we've got here and what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate that beautiful edible with the floral stamps the butterfly stamps the sentiments the papers and that linen cardstock as well and it's a lovely cute little small card for you to then get creative with so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our card blank. Now I have created my own one here. It's a bit of a different size. It's actually six inches in height by four and a quarter. So it's a little bit longer. I'd come along with my Ultimate Pro afterwards and make an envelope. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to actually just bring in a pencil and then using my glass mat, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to come in an inch and a quarter and put a little pencil mark and then I'm going to do the same at the top. I'm just coming in an inch and a quarter and doing a pencil mark top and bottom. Because what I need to do is line up the elegant butterfly border die. So with this border die, what happens is you have all of the beautiful design, that intricate design that die cuts into your cardstock. Now you've got an outside edge, so that's then going to remove it out your cardstock this side has no cutting edge, so that stays in your cardstock. Now, if I turn that around, where you've got the two cutting edges, the end, top and bottom, what I'm going to do is marry them up against my pencil line, top and bottom, that you can see here. And then what I can then do is come in with my low-tack tape. So using my low-tack tape, we can then come along and then we can then secure that into place. So again, top and bottom, just positioning where my pencil marks are. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to tape down. Now, I was talking about the cutting edge a moment ago. So this side here has the outside cutting edge. So that means this part here is going to be waste. You're not going to see or need that. Whereas all of this is going to stay in place with that beautiful design cut into play. So what we're then going to do is we're going to come in with our plates. So we're going to go in with our cutting plate. Now I'm going to twist it at a little bit of an angle. If you go straight front up to the Gemini, then the rollers are then having to hit so many cutting points at once. So just turn it at the side ever so slightly. You've got a lot of space to do that. And then what it does is the rollers are then eased up onto all of the cutting points. So I can then come in with my frosted shim. I'm going to come in with my magnetic shim and then my top cutting plate. We're just going to then line that up and then we're going to let that do its thing when it comes to the Gemini 2. We're going to let that go in. I'm just going to wait a moment and then I'm going to do the pause and then I'm going to do that reverse. Don't need it to go all the way through, so I'm just as well pausing and reversing. But then what it also does as well, because you've got that intricate design, not that you need a double cut, but then it gives it its double cut anyway. So you know that your edge of your card is going to be cut to perfection. So all that I then need to do is just come along. And look how easily that just comes away. It's like knife through butter. Absolutely perfect. So I can just go back in, fold that in. I'm going to go in with my bone folder and give that a good burnish down. And then there we have the edge of our card. Beautiful within the butterflies. But at the moment, it's just sitting into the backdrop of your white card. You're not really seeing it. So let's go back in with that die once again. So let's take all of that off. And then you can then come along. If you go in with your die brush tool, 
and then we're just going to take all these little bits out. So let's use our tool, take all of these bits out. Any little bits left over, you can come along with your pokey tool and pop them out. But there we go, we're nice, and then we're nice, crisp and clean when it comes to us cutting again. So let's take all that away. And then I'm going to go in with a piece of black cardstock here. Now, the actual width of the cardstock, it doesn't really matter. What you do want it to be is the same size, same height as your card blank. So it is six inches in height. And then what I'm going to do within this one, I'm just going to pop it up to the edge. Don't really need to worry about a pencil line or that for this one. If you do want to keep this straight, you can then, of course, just use the grids of your glass mat. So choose a line in with a grid and then we can then tape that down. So let's tape that one down into place. We're going to go back in with our Gemini 2 plates once again. And then I'm going to go in at an angle as well. Same configuration. So frosted, magnetic, and then our top plate. Feed that up to the Gemini 2. Let that do its thing. It's going to go in. And then once again, as I've done before, I'm just going to let that go over the die. I'm then going to do the pause. We're going to do the reverse. That's then going to feed itself back out again. That's going to be nicely cut within that black matte cardstock. So as it comes out, let's then remove all the layers together. Take these ones out. And then once again, look at that, it just falls apart to perfection. So now that we've got our separate layer, now that could be a separate component if you want it to be. Maybe do little wrap rounds. You can continue the die cut if you want to. But what I am going to end up doing is I'm going to do a drop shadow. So we're going to do a drop shadow with the butterfly so it's popping over the edge here. And that's what I meant by it didn't really matter the length of this because you can come along and cover this back with a piece of pattern paper if you want to. But then that is us ready to go when it comes to that drop shadow. But let's just set that to the side for now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some pattern paper from the collection, a little bit extra black cardstock, and then that ivory linen cardstock. So I need my guillotine, because what we also need to do as well, is if I bring back in that card blank, I need to have a panel to cut into where it is my pattern paper, my black and my linen. So what I'm just doing here, visually I'm just having a look. So I can see roughly there's about two, two and a quarter, I don't know, two and three quarter in diameter left between the edge of my card and that die cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a strip that's two and a half inches of the pattern paper. So let's go in with the two and a half inches. And I've just picked any of the pattern paper that I've got here from the collection. So if I see this one here, you can see how we've then got our white border down each side. There's not enough though for me to have a black and a linen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm actually going to come down by half an inch. So we're going to come down to two inches and then let's cut. And then if I bring this one back in, you can see now I've got ample space for my mats and layers. Now because this is six inches, let's come down half an inch as well to five and a half inches. That can sit into there. We've got that perfect framework of white card and now I've got plenty of room to do my mats and layers. So let's bring in that piece of black. So I'm going to go up, I want a very fine black layer. So I'm going to go and do my quarter of an inch increment that I like to do and then cut down. So of course that's two inches. So let's cut that at two and a quarter. And then this was five and a half. So let's cut it to five and three quarters. Let's take all that out of the way. Now, if I bring that one in, yes, we've got a perfect quarter of an inch matte and layer, but it's too much for me. So let's go in and then take a little slither at a time. So I'm going to come down maybe about three, let's, yeah, let's say, let's say three mil on this one. And then turn it and do about three mil once again. Have a look. And then if you want a bit more, then you can trim a bit more. But in actual fact, I'm happy with that one. So then what we can do is let's take in our piece of linen cardstock. And then if I then go back into that black and then just start to marry it up, let's have a look. So it's just over that two inch mark, just over that five and a half. So let's go two and a quarter by five and three quarters. Let's have a look at that one. 
perfect. I'm so happy with that one. So we've got that layer that's all going to work together. You've got that separation with the black cardstock, and then that is then going to sit just nicely at the side of your card once you come to assemble it. So that's our next layer already done, so let's move that to the side. What we can then start to do is let's do some stamping and colouring. So I've got some cardstock. Now you can be using Nina cardstock. I'm using a little bit excess of my white multi-purpose cardstock and we're going to come in with our stamps. So we've got our grand floral. So for this one, I'm going to need my stamping mat and I'm going to need my stamping platform and I'm also going to need my alcohol proof ink pad because we're going to do alcohol colouring. So let's go and then let's add our stamps on. So I'm going to go in with my floral. I'm going to go in with my leaves as well. And then I'm going to just pop them on the same time. I'm just making sure I've got a bit of space for when we come and do the die cutting. So then let's bring in our ink. So if I ink that one up with the Noir Black, we can then start to give it a good coverage. Once you're happy with the coverage, you can then just flip that around onto your card and then we can then do some stamping. So I like to hold with one hand and move around with the other. And then if I uh, chop and change, then I do that. But I'm always keeping one hand still and moving the other. So then what we can then do is remove that out of the way. We've got that beautiful floral. We've got the leaves as well. What we can do before we start to do the die cutting, we can come along with our tri-blend pens. So I have got five in total here that we'll go through in a second. I've got the citrus green blend and I've got the magenta blend, gold yellow blend, lavender blend, and then also the ice gray blend. So to do our alcohol coloring, let's go in with a piece of scrap card underneath. And I'm going to start with the magenta blend here. So if I bring in the magenta and I'm going to start with that light tone, so I'm going to pick out one of the petals to start with and then we're going to lay that colour down. So I'm going to go in with that lightest tone first and then I'm going to come about two thirds of the way down on the petal. So we're just going to build up that light tone, um, essentially priming my cardstock with my light. And then what I can then do is then change over into that darker tone. So I can then go into where I feel it would be dark, just under the overlap of the petals. So let's just then blend that one in. And then I can go into the mid-tone. So if we go in with the mid-tone, and then we're just going to blend that one out. So we can keep on blending. And then what we're then going to do is we're going to go back into that light tone. We're just going to finish that one off and blend that in to give you that beautiful shaded petal. Now with it being an alcohol pen, it'll take a few moments for that alcohol to evaporate and you'll see that seamless blend. So what we can then do is we can then just go in and then lay that color down once again. So we're doing section by section. Don't be inclined to go along and do lots of petals at once with a light tone and then do them that way because then what can happen is that alcohol can evaporate and then it makes it very, very hard, harder for you to then come along and blend. So once again, let's go in. Now I'm keeping the actual blend quite simple. So I'm going where the petals overlap, just within the, the center of the floral. But you've got all this accent detail on the petals. So you can come along and you can follow that flow where it comes to those highlight lines if you so wish. You can maybe come in from another direction. It's up to yourself. The good thing with this one is you just get to have fun. Whether you're using your alcohol pens, these ones being tri-blends, maybe you're going to come along use your classics, or maybe you're going to do some watercolour in. Therefore, what you would need is your watercolour card, and then, of course, your waterproof ink pad. So let's work our way around this one here. So laying down that light tone, repeating the process each time. So now I've gone over into that darker shade. And then we can then flip into that mid one and blend that one out. Work our way up and then we can then just finish that one off with the dark tone. What I'm going to do within this one, I'm just going to go back into that darker and just very, very lightly add a little bit of that dark shade. 
very lightly, so lightly, I'm just doing little dots with that mid-tone. And then the same with that light tone to blend it out. Let's go in with this one. And then we're doing that same. So just colouring it in all the way around. And then we're going to then flip over. So we'll do this one, and then we'll do that one, and then we can do the centre, bringing in another colour before we do the leaves. So work it in, taking your time with each petal. Enjoy that colouring process, that relaxation. Going into this one now. So laying that down all the way around, up to the edge, leaving that little bit preserved highlight around the edge. And going back into that darker tone, keeping it simple, just following it around into that mid, all the way in. And then we're going to then go in with that light tone to finish off. You can then carry on going all the way around. And then we can then go in to our gold yellow blend. Now with the gold yellow blend, what we're then going to do within this one here is we're then just going to go into the centre of the floral. So if we colour in, now this is the light tone, so we're just going to go in with that light tone to start with, laying that completely down and just going into the centre there. So really giving that a good coverage with that light tone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then go over into that darker tone and then I'm just going to come round the edge here all the way around. I'm not doing that full circle of the centre, I'm just doing kind of like half a circle into that mid-tone. And then what we can do is blend that out. And then I'm going to go back into that light tone and blend that one out and leaving it as it is. And then what we can do is let's go over into the citrus green blend here. So with the citrus green, we're going to come down into the leaves. Now I'm laying down that light tone to start with. Now each leaf as well, I'm doing uh, singly or individually the leaves. So I'm doing that whole one there, laying down that lighter tone. We can then go in to that darker shade. Now for this one, I'm going to come down into that center point of the leaf. I'm going to come up that little bit and even in that center here. And then with the mid-tone, just blending that one out. And then back into that mid-tone again and just finishing that one off. Let's do another one for now. Let's go in with this one. And with these leaves, I am just following that highlight that's already there when it comes to the stamped impression. Let's work our way with that darker edge into that base there and then into that mid-tone and then colour and then what we can then do is just finish that one off like so. Now we've got a couple of butterflies to do in a moment but what we can do is then once you have done all of that you're going to be left with something that looks like this. Now what I have done is I have just used my white gel pen you know, you may have got one in a past collection from Crafter's Companion, but I've gone in with a white gel pen. The outline, that's where I've used my ice grey blend. So I've gone in with the light tone, and then all that I've done is just drawn all the way around. Now, when you come to use the die cut, it will have that white outline. So that's why I like to go with a grey outline, just to finish it off which then gives you that look. So I'd done them in the exact same way. The only difference was a little white gel pen and created a little bit of a highlight. That's when your dies come in. So let's bring in the dies that match perfectly. So we can then bring this one in. We're going to bring this one in. And then what we can then do is then overlap and overlay the die on top of that floral. So if we use our low tack tape to secure down, so I'm going to go in with this one up to the top here. So I'm just making sure I, I see just to know more that outline. But again, because you have popped that grey outline pen all the way round, it won't matter because you're going to see that grey instead. Let's bring in our floral leaf and then we can then come along and then we can line that one up just here. 
press that one in. Now, before I cut, I'm going to set that to the side because let's do our butterflies first because then we can cut them out at the same time. So let's go in with our butterfly stamp here. Now, within this one here, we've used the flutter by. Now, you've got the stamp and you've got the die for this one. So I'm going to come in with another piece of cardstock and then we can then go in with two of them. So I'm going to go in with the largest and the smallest butterfly. I'm only doing two of them, not the actual three of them. And then to make it easier for ourselves, let's go in and let's just chop that down that little bit more because we're going to do a little bit more alcohol colouring with the tri-blends. So if I bring in my stamping platform, so I'm bringing in my stamping mat, bringing in my stamping platform. I don't need these, so I can take them off, but I need these, so let's pop them on. So let's pop that one onto there, and that one onto there. And then I'm still going to stick with my Noir Black Alcohol Proof. So let's stick that onto our platform that we've already done, and then ink up with our Noir Black. What we can then do is turn that over, and then we can then stamp that out. So stamp that out, give it a good pressure, release. Then what we've then got is our two butterflies ready to colour in. And then this is where our other colours once again. So I'm going to go in with the lavender and then I'm going to go back in with the magenta. Now when it comes to the lavender, what I'm going to do is only use that light tone. So we can then go in with that light tone into the base there. So let's then start to add that colour on. And then at this point, what I'm going to do is chop into that darker side. And I'm just going to come round those little pattern pieces that I've left white. And then what we can do is blend that one out. So just blend that one out with the mid-tone of the lavender blend. And then we can then come back into that light tone and blend that one out. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Now you might want to change the way in which you colour. The colour and patterns might want to be different. But as you can see with the butterfly, I'm keeping it quite symmetrical. So let's add our light tone. I'm going to go back into the base there with that darker tone. Work our way in. And then we're blending that one out. So the layers of our alcohol of the colour are going to give you that beautiful blend as you get to the base. Let's just colour that one down into there. Now when it comes to this butterfly that I've used, I'm just going to go into the top and the bottom there with that little bit of lavender. And then I'm going to go back into that magenta. And for the magenta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with that light tone. And because these are really small, I'm just going to do these two bits together. So blend that out. Go back in. Blend that out. And then finish off with the light tone. Do the same within these two bits there. Colour, lay that light tone, go in with the dark top bit, go in with that mid-tone in the middle and then let's end that with the light tone again. And then for this one, all that I'm just going to do is I'm just going to colour in the butterfly with the light tone of the magenta. No blending, no shading, just keeping that nice and light. And then what we can do, as I went over before, let's go in with the ice grey too. And I am, as you can see, very roughly going around the edges. You don't need to spend too long. All that you just want to do is give it that highlight. So as if it's just standing from the page. But then what it also means is once you come to use your die to die cut it out, if you don't like that white edge, then you've got that nice light grey edge. So there's our two butterflies. And then while we are here with the dies, let's bring them in. So let's bring one of them. Let's bring the smallest one that we can see here. Let's take our low tack tape and then we can then overlay that one into position here. Tape that in. We can then come into position here and then tape that down. And then while I've got all my stamping tools out, let's do our sentiment before we do all that die cutting. And now for this sentiment, we're going to go back into our butterfly wishes. And I'm going to go in with the, let's go in with the say strong for this one here. Nice positive sentiment to send to someone. 
So I'm going to go in, I've already cut my cardstock to size and it's just a slightly bit bigger than my actual sentiment. But to be precise, I have cut it to two inches by three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go back in with my ink pad here so we can then ink that one up, saying stay, stay strong. We can then hover and then once I'm happy with the positioning, I can then press that into position. And then we've got stay strong, lovely, positive, happy sentiment to send to someone. And then all that I do afterwards, as I showed you with the layers beforehand, cut a black matting layer and then stick in with that ivory linen card, another layer there. So that's our main components all ready to go. So let's do our die cutting and then we can assemble the card. So let's bring in our layers. Let's bring in our butterflies. What we can then do is bring our frosted, magnetic, top plate, line it up. And then when it comes to the Gemini, you're letting that do its thing. Now, of course, I could, as before, pause it and reverse it. But just to show you that you don't have to, let's just let it do its thing. It's going to run all the way through. It's going to have die cut the flowers, the leaves, the butterflies for us to then assemble. So what we've then got now is our butterfly, but because we've got that grey edge, it just takes away that sharpness of the white. We can then do the same with our smaller one. So we've got our lovely little butterfly there. And then what we can then do is bring in our flower. So striking. Really works a treat with that magenta. And then we're going to go in with our floral leaves, making sure our tape doesn't catch it. And then that's us all good to go. So let's bring in our card base now. And then what we're going to do is let's take in, I'm going to use my dotty tape runner for this one. So I'm also then going to come along, I'm going to use a little bit of scrap card just underneath here. So I'm going to go on with my tape runner. You might want to use your tacky glue and your fine applicator. So I'm just making sure I've got good coverage of my dots all the way down to the side here. And I don't like to waste all my dots, so therefore I'm just going to end that with my straight tape runner. So let's move that out the way. And then what I'm going to do is if you find it hard to do drop shadows, if you find that the card, the paper moves, what to do is then just add a little bit of the dots onto your back layer and then stick that onto your glass mat or your surface. And then that means it's not moving now. So if you have an intricate die cut that moves, it slips, it slides, just tape it down. And then what we can then do is, usually with a drop shadow, I drop it down to the side. But what I'm actually doing is I want the drop shadow to be to what will be the actual uh, side of your card. So let's go in. And then once you're happy with the positioning, what you can then do is press that down and then see how that just removes from your glass mat with absolute ease. So building up that heat there just so that it makes it nice and sticky. And then you've got that nice clean bit. Even the little dots there, they will just rub away on your black cardstock. Alternatively, what you can then come along and do is just put a strip of pattern paper if you want to hide that panel. But let's close that one up. Let's come back in now with our layer. So let's build these ones up with our tape runner. So let's work that into the sides here and then that can go onto our black layer. And it does not matter whatever pattern paper you choose to use, whether you go for a really strong striking design, whether you go for a muted design, subtle design, it's all going to work. Each of them are going to complement each other. And this is where I've said a couple of times that I have just gone in and picked whichever one comes to hand. So what we can then do with this one is let's go in once again with my tape around the back there. This one can then go into the sides. So let's have a look. Let's go that way. That's going to sit into there like so. Still keeping in line with the white border. You know, with this one, I do like the white border because you've got the white border of the butterflies that's broken up when it comes to the actual back layer. 
and then what I have, this bit I have already done, but I'll talk you through the measurements, because of course, even although you've got that black drop shadow, it's still, it looks lovely and it's going to work, the recipient will love it, and you could keep it like that, but then you can still come along and add a bit of pattern paper to the back. So the actual pattern paper I've cut to three and three quarters by five and a half, and I've just done the same way that I've done my mats and layers for this one, just little increments at a time, chopping away, and then that's how I've got these layers. Now this one, I've already got my tape on the back there, so let's take this one off. So if I take that off with my pokey tool, that can go onto the back. Two completely different patterns from the actual pad, but works together. Now for this one, you could either write your sentiment and your message on the back, or even go in with a little white mat and layer in the middle there. That's what I would do personally, but that's up to you. Then we're going to come in with our last components here put together. So let's go in with Stay Strong. That can go onto the black. And again, if you struggle with the little layers, if you are like me that like your little layers but you find it the struggle, use your dotty tape runner. Hold it into place. Use it to help you out. This one I've also got my tape on. So let's go on into here. And this is a prime example as to where you can use different adhesives. I'm now chopping and changing between my tape runner and then my double-sided tape. Then what we can do is let's come in now with our floral. I'm manipulating that a little bit. I'm going to go in with a deep foam pad into the middle. Just the one, because then I can shape it. So what I can then do is bring that one down into there. Then what I'm going to do within this one here is let's take our scissors and then let's just chop a little bit. And then that one can go into here. So for this one, what I'm going to do is just pop that out the side there. We need our sentiments, stay strong. Now this one, and in actual fact, let's see if I carefully perfect, because I've not pressed down too hard. What to do is, let's have a look, see where we want our sentiment first, because I don't want it to be pressed too far down along the bottom. So I'm going to come in, yeah, I'm going to come in there, because then what we're doing is we're still creating that visual corner down there. For me, it's all about pleasing on the eye. So let's go back in with our floral here. That one can layer just over the side. That one can then just pop out of here. Let's bring in our two butterflies. So this one, let's add a little strip of a foam into here. That one can go down into there. And then this one, what we can then do, another teeny tiny little foam pad onto the back. There, we're going to just going to bend the wings up, and then for this one, let's go up into there, and then there we go. We've got a lovely six by four and a quarter card that you can then come along with your own envelopes for your Ultimate Pro, your envelope maker, but combining the edgeable, combining the stamps, combining the dies, but then bringing in the papers as well as that linen cardstock. That is just one idea as to how you can be using your butterfly in bloom from your Gemini Club. Butterfly and Bloom collection. Okay, you can keep it simple. Maybe you want to bring in your layers with your ink, but what about going in that mixed media, combining the layers with the inks, the fussy cut and the decoupage? Well, you can absolutely do that if you want to. For instance, this is what we're going to be making here. We're going to be combining a lot of the stamps within the one set, but making a focal point in the middle, but extending it out onto a large cardstock. So where do we start? Well, we're going to start with the stamping 
onto linen cardstock. So I'm going to bring in a piece of that linen cardstock that we've got within the collection here. And I'm going to bring in my stamping mat and my stamping platform. Now I've gone in with the actual stamp itself. So let's take the stamp off and we're then going to pop it into place. Now the only reason my linen cardstock is this size is so that I'm, well, being quite frugal with it. We're going to then just very lightly and quickly fussy cut afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with my Noir Black for this one and we're going to then give it a good coverage. We're going to ink up and we're using the Noir Black alcohol proof is because we're going to do some alcohol colouring. Now alcohol colouring on your linen cardstock, it's not the perfect cardstock to do blending or shading, but you can still colour. You know, these are still key alcohol colours that you can use and colour onto so many different surfaces such as linen card. So let's ink this one up. Alternatively, in the alcohol proof range ink pad, you could use pebble or rustic brown. That would work within this collection here. But look at that, floral, script work, butterfly, posted stamp, the mark, all of that is there for you. So what we can then do is then move all that one out of the way. Now we are going to ink around the edge. If I was to ink it around the edge at the moment, what will happen is then I'll ink around the edge, get a lovely blend, and then I'm going to chop it all off. And then what we're going to be left with is just a smooth edge. And I want kind of like a harsh line when it comes to the ink. So therefore, what I'm going to do is using my scissors. Now the line itself is not straight and it's not meant to be. And therefore, it gives you more of a free rein to just be quick. Now when I say being quick, it means that you don't have to be smooth, you don't have to be straight, you can then go on the wonk if you want and it actually works within the design. You've got that freedom when it comes to the creative play of cutting. So now that we've got our postmark already cut out, what I'm going to do is before we come along and do some alcohol colouring, let's bring in Sandstorm Water Reactive. So we're going to go in and we're going to ink up our actual blending tool. So let's ink that one up. What we'll do as well is I'll just give you a little bit of a tip. You'll see me inking up onto my glass mat. What I usually do is I'll usually have my ink pad up against my glass mat. Now by doing that, that means that we're not going to be chasing it about. So you can see my hand movement there. I'm just pulling down on that ink pad and then that's just applying it and it just means I'm not chasing it all over the place. So what we can then do is then we can then come on and then we're just going to then blend that on. So inking up and then we're just going to then blend that one into place. We're just going to keep going and inking up all the way around the edges here. You're going to get that texture from the linen shining through as well. I say shining through, you know, not quite shine, but you're going to get that texture popping through because you've got that emboss feel to the cardstock. And then we've got our nice smooth blend when it comes. I'm going to keep that central, you know, quite light within the linen. But saying that, we're going to colour a lot of that anyway. So it's not going to be overly noticeable. So what we can then do is if we stick to our actual stamped image postcard. And let's bring in a selection of our tri-blends. So I'm going to go in with Alpine Green Blend. I'm going to go in with some pale pink shades and then I'm also going to go in with some of our gold brown blend. Now when it comes to the gold brown blend, that's really just going to be for in what could be a sunflower if you want it to be. Now I just popped my stamp postcard onto a piece of cardstock. It can be scrap cardstock. Although we're not going to be doing a lot of blending and shading because it's linen cardstock, it's just there just creating that little bit of protection underneath. Then what I've done is I've gone in with pale pink shades and I'm going to go in with the lighter tone. And what I am going to do with this one, because I'm not focusing or concentrating on blending and shading, I'm just going to go all the way around the actual floral head of the design with that light tone. Then I'm going to come along and then I'm just going to pick up some of that accent shadow underneath. Now with it being your linen, plus it is ivory, plus you've got some sandstorm there, it's going to give it a different tone. So it's not going to be the actual pale pink that you would be used to onto your white card. So what I'm going to do within this one is I'm just dotting underneath where it would, to me, be dark. 
I'm just going to go in and do light little dots, creating that shadow. I'm then going to go into that mid-tone and again, just lightly dotting that in like so. And then what we can then do is go back in with that light tone. We're just going to finish it off. So we're acting as if we are still going to be blending and shading, but with it being, as I said, the linen cardstock, it's not going to be that naturally looking blend and shade, but it's still going to be quite effective. So I'm just missed a couple of bits into here. So let's add a few bits here. Let's add our mid-tone into here. And then let's just finish that one off there. So that's our floral head. So what I can then do is go into my Alpine Green Blend. And then for this one, you will have guessed what we are going to do is we're going to go into the leaves. So I'm just doing a couple at a time. So going against what I usually say when it comes to doing your alcohol colouring, and that's do a section at a time. But because we don't have that worry with the texture of the card, we're just going to go in and do a few at a time. Just dot in with that darker shade into that mid-tone and then dot in that one out again. And then what we can do is finish that one off with the light tone. What we've then got is a beautiful shade. It will still evaporate after a very short amount of time, but we can then go into this one, into this one, colour that one in. We can then go in with that darker and then just start add our highlight we can then blend that one in with the alpine green that mid-tone and then finish that one off now i still have a few leaves here to do but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in with our gold brown blend now for this one i'm going to do exactly as i was doing there with the flower head before it could be a rose it could be a peony it could be made up if you want it to be any that you want i'm just going in with that lighter tone of the gold brown blend and then what I'm going to do is very, very lightly and rustically, if that is ever even a word, we're just going to work our way around. And this is the great thing, not only about this card, but certainly this collection. Because you've got that vintage, you've got that natural kind of feel to it, that rustic feel to it. It is very, very forgiving. So if it's one that you want to use as a confidence builder, this will absolutely do that. It's going to build your confidence because any little what you may think are mistakes won't necessarily be seen because of that rustic, organic kind of feel to it. So this time I'm just going to go in with the Earth Brown Blend, going in with that lighter tone. We can then go in with that darker tone. We can then go in with that mid-tone finish off with that light tone. Then I'm going to go back in now with my Alpine Green Blend and let's go, I'm actually just going to jump back for a second to the pale pink because I've noticed that one is part of that leaf there. So back in with that Alpine Green, let's finish that one off. And if you love to fussy cut, this is a lovely stamp for you to then stamp. Uh, you, maybe you want to repeat this process a few times and then fussy cut some of the flowers. That would look lovely. So you can go in into here. So it's combining different techniques. You know, not only are you then creating your own decoupage, but you're creating your own stamping decoupage, which is a nice form. It's a nice relaxation form of stamping and colouring. There's one relaxation tick. And then if you do, like me, find fussy cut in relaxation, then that is your second one. So you've got a lot of relaxation potentially that's going on with this one image. So then what I'm going to do is let's go back in with the pale pink shades. And then this butterfly here, what I'm going to do is just colour in that whole butterfly that we can just see here. So colour that one in. And then I'm just going to go into that darker end into the centre of the body that we can see here and already from up above you can see how okay it's maybe not your actual alcohol card stocks maybe not your Nina or your multi-purpose but see how it works with the linen card stock it still works still give your alcohol colour in a try even although it's maybe not necessarily the uh, proper card socks so to speak and then all that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the purple blend here in that lighter tone and just give that butterfly a little bit of a colour. And then that's all that I'm going to do with that one. There is our beautiful postcard already stamped, inked, 
coloured and then we're ready to go with the next part. So talking about the next part, let's come in with a piece of our white multi-purpose cardstock. And I'm going to come in with our Sandstorm Water Reactive. Loving the Sandstorm for this collection here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into that stamp set. Now with this stamp set, we're going to go in with the musical lyrics. And then we can then start to stamp this one. Now what I'm going to do for this is if I bring in my stamping platform, I'm not going to put my stamping mat on the glass mat because I'm not... I'm, I, I don't mind if I miss any impressions. And in actual fact, I kind of want to miss a few bits. I don't want, again, that natural. I don't want that perfect impression. So I'm going in with the stamps, and I'm just very quickly going in. Now, that's what I want. See how I've got some of the design. It's lighter. It's missed bits. I want that. So what we're then going to do is go in again, and then we're just going to go side by side, stamp, lift. So we've got that little bit of a join, and it's not a perfect join, and I don't want it to be. This time, instead of starting at the side again, I'm going to come in between here. It's as if you're laying floorboards, or you know, you're going in with panelling and brickwork, anything like that, offsetting them to the side. So that one, stamp. I've still got so, some ink on that side, so stamp, and then we can then go back. Always take your ink pad to the stamp. And then, again, there's my two joins there. So let's go into here. And then let's ink up. Let's continue that one there. I'll still have a little bit of ink there so we can finish that one off. And then what we can do is come down to the bottom, working our way all the way down. So stamp that one, ink up. And then what we can then do is stamp that into place. And then what I'm going to do, to start with, I'm going to use the ink that's already there, and I've already still got some ink on my sandstorm. So I'm just going to come into place. So between the ink, excess ink that's on your blending pad, as well as your water reactive ink impression that's already there, you're still going to get a really nice blend. You're going to be able to blend that in. You're still going to see that image, but what it is doing is it is also blending. It's as if it's bleeding that image out because you're blending that excess ink because technically it's still a wet ink at this point. It stays open. So for that one, that's all that I'm going to do. But what I am going to do to finish off is I'm going to go around the edge here and I'm really going to go quite heavy handed in creating that sharp edge. This won't affect, it's not going to hurt, it's not going to damage your ink pad whatsoever, but it gives you that nice edge. Now for me, that could have been out of a six by six pattern paper that I've chopped up myself. That could be bigger, of course, it could be smaller, you could die cut into it, you can do anything like that. So with that layer, that was three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I've already gone in and added a black matting layer. Now that black matting layer is a quarter of an inch bigger. And then what I have done is I've also gone in with some of that navy cardstock. Now that isn't quite a quarter of an inch bigger. I've then just created a really, really thin border. Now I know black against navy, you might be thinking, is that going to work? It is going to work. It's subtle, but what it is, it's going to then work in flow of the pattern paper that we're going to use just shortly. So then what I can then do is set that one to the side. I'll bring in the layers that I've already cut because we've still got a little bit of stamping and colouring to do. So I've gone in with this beautiful, so we've got kind of like the hydrangeas with the butterflies, that postmark, all that is there. Now my card blank itself is seven by seven. So the pattern paper I've cut to six and a half by six and a half. The black I've created a very fine border. So I have cut the black to six and three quarters by six and three quarters and then I trimmed a couple of millimetres off the top and the side and then if I bring in my navy from the collection I've done exactly the same. So this one here, just to remind myself, is six and three quarters by six and three quarters and created a little bit of a border. So that is my layers there good to go. Then I've got my layers here that we've created that that will be good to go just shortly. And then what we can then do is bring in another piece of my white multi-purpose cardstock. We're going to come back in with that stamp set where we've got that postmark and the musical and sheets. And I'm going to go in with our elongated floral. I'm going to go in with the butterfly and that little posted stamp. 
we then need my stamping platform and my stamping mat. So we're going to go in. So I'm going to go in with my stamp. Now there's no dies for these ones. You're going to then fussy cut. So I don't need to worry about these being spread apart because I'm then just going to be cutting them. So you've got no worry about space when it comes to the dies. So popping your stamps into position in the right way, we can then come in with our alcohol proof ink pad. So I'm using Noir Black because we'll do a little bit of alcohol colouring. Stamp that up, bring in our cardstock, and then what we're going to do is we're going to press that into place. So this is just an off cut that I had. This is why it is the certain size, because as I go back to saying, you don't have the dies, so you don't need to worry about the edges to them. What you're then left with is your impression. And then I'm going to then move that to the side and let's bring in some of our tri-blends. So I'm going to go in still with the same colours that I have used within that postmark. I'm going to go in with the pale pink shades. I'm going to go in with a little bit of alpine green. We're then going to go in with some of our gold brown blend. And I think let's maybe add a little bit of the purple. So what we can do is let's come in with this one here and for the postage stamp I'm going to keep this one simple let's go as if it is the right way and then I'm going to go in with that lighter tone of the gold brown blend and then we're just going to lay that colour over the back there give it a good coverage working its way around and then I'm going to go into that darker shade and then I'm going to come down the side and then I'm going to come along the bottom and then up the side again into the mid-tone, blend that one out all the way around and then back into that light tone, blending that one around into place, blend it out. That's all that I'm going to do. Leave that just for a few moments to evaporate. Let's then go into our pale pink shades. Now for this one, I'm going to go all the way over the wings with that lighter tone so we can work our way around into place finishing that one off. Now you may have seen just down here at the bottom there, the stamp hadn't quite caught the corner, but because if I refer back to that rustic organic feel, I'm not overly bothered. You've got that more distressed look, that distressed feel. And in actual fact, it could look as though it was part of the stamp because you've got that feel within the collection. So that's why I'm still just going to be using it. Let's go in with that darker to the side, to the side. Let's go in with that mid-tone and then we're going to blend that out like so. We're then going to go in with that lighter tone and blend that one out. And then what we can do to make that body stand out, let's go in with the purple. I'm going to go in with the light tone and then just add that to the bottom part of the butterfly. And that's it. That's all I'm doing with that one. And then when it comes to this one, what I'll do is I'll not colour the whole lot in, but let's go in with the Alpine Green. And I'm using the tip of my tri-blend, and I'm just coming down the actual leaves. So what we can then is then work into here, follow that flow. We can then still go in and do little bits of blend and shade with that dark. We can then blend that out with the mid into the mid, into the mid, and then we can then finish that one off. So we can finish that one. And then what I would do is I would go back in with the pale pink, and then we can then color a couple of these ones in here. Now these petals I would do individually, although that they are not overly large, I would still do them, they're, you know, they're big enough, medium-ish for you to come and do individually. So we can then blend that one out and then blend that one out. So what I would then do is carry on with the same top and the bottom there. Let's bring in our little scissors. So what I can then do when it comes to cutting out, I like to roughly cut to start with. So with a postage stamp, I'm just going to work my way around. I'm not being overly precise about it being straight. If in actual fact, I'm kind of following the outline of the stamp, which is on a little bit of a wonk anyway. So there is our postage stamp. We can go in with the butterflies. Now, once again, I'm just really going to chop away some of that excess. What we can then do is follow. Now, I'm keeping my hand still with my scissors. The only action I'm doing is closing 
my uh, scissors here, I'm moving this hand with my card. So you, certainly when it comes to something like a butterfly that's got that flow, that roundness, it's a lot easier for you to flow around. Now I am keeping those little antennas. You can then maybe just chop them off if you want to, but we can then follow, flow all the way around. I always like to leave, you know, maybe one, two millimeter border. That's up to you. You can go right up to the butterfly wings or you can then leave a bigger border. But then there we go. We've got our little butterfly. And then for this one, what I'll do is I'll not cut the whole lot out, but I will start to cut this intricate part out just so that you can see. Now, you've got the choice. If you want to create kind of like just a bubble all the way around of your cut, you can do or you can do what I like to do and go into all of the little bits. So we'll go into here, follow all the way around. Now it's something like this, what I do is I skip to start with. So I do my outline and then work our way in. So I find it easier to do the outline first, flow all the way around, and then you would just keep on going all the way around until you get to the top. This bit, what I would then do is come back in Continue that curve, so you've not got that harsh point. Curve in, and then cut, and then you've got one side just here. Cut in, cut up, and then what you can then do is just close them off at the bottom just here. And then you would do the same on the opposite side here. So I'm just going to come in, and come in at different angles, angles that suit you. You know, if it's difficult, when it comes to turning your card, if you're in a position that's difficult for your hands, then just make it easier for yourself. But I highly recommend go in and create in that kind of halo cut, then come in and do all of these little bits. So once you've done all of that, yours will then look like that one. And then I have already done another butterfly so we'll still use the one that I've done this one I've gone into the wings in the center with a little bit more of the purple so we've got all of these components together what we just need to do is one last bit before we finish it and then that is our sentiment so I'm going to come in with our lots of love so let's bring in our lots of love let's bring in translucent clear ink pad. Let's bring in some gold embossing powder. And then let's bring in a little piece of that navy linen cardstock within the collection. So let's bring in all of our tools that we need here. So let's take these stamps off for now. We can then go in with that lots of love like so. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all these ready. If you have an anti-static bag, then you can use that if you want to. I don't have one to hand, so I will just go straight on. So I'm going in with my translucent clear ink pad, my watermark ink pad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that one up. And then I'm using, even though it's navy against purple, I'm using that contrast visually to line up. Now I'm just going to press that in. Now with this being a dark navy, you might see that watermark effect of the sentiment. You might not. Let's lift that one up. I can see it just, you can, or you can maybe just see it and no, oh yeah, you can just see there. Now what you will do is you will see it in a moment when I come over with my gold embossing powder and then I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top. What we can then do is lift that one up. Then we've got lots of love. Now at the moment, it's still a bit dull. So this is where the heat comes into play. So let's just pop all that one back, tidy as I'm going. I've got my crafter's companion heat tool just to the side of me here. So let's move that out the way. What we're going to do is we're going to then just get this to temperature just for a second. We're going to let that go. And then once I'm happy, because it is a small piece of cardstock, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my pokey tool just to hold down the edge so I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm going to start at the edge of the love and then work my way along. But I'm sure as it melts, you're going to see it on screen. So, okay. ah, look at that. Perfect. We've got that reveal of the sentiment. We've gone in with that lots of love. And if I refer back to that anti-static bag, 
If you use the anti-static bag, what that would do is that would stop any of the powder sticking around the cardstock. But if I go back once again to the fact that it's more of an organic, a rustic sort of feel to a collection, I've still got some powder there that's melted into place, but how well does that work? That works really, really well. So excess powder where you initially don't want it to be can actually work in your favour. So don't think it's wrong, don't bin it, still use it. And then what we can then do is matte and layer that onto a piece of our linen cardstock. And then talking about matte and layer, let's do that. All that we need to do is combine all of these components together. So I'm going to go in with my tape runner for this one here. We went over the measurements at the start. So this is a seven by seven card blank. So I'm going to layer that one into here, over the top, position and press. That one, we can work our way around with our tape once again. You might want to then take out the center of that. So what we can then do is then press that into place. Now for this one, because I'm going to go for a little bit of height within the center of my card, I'm going to do a top full card or a tent full card. That's going to then balance the weight. So that one can go into there. Let's bring in these layers here. So this one, where we've gone and created our own background, can then go onto the black there. What we can then do is pop that one onto our navy linen here. And then for this one, what we are going to do is we're going to bring in some of our deep foam pads. So let's pop one, let's do two, three and four. So let's just see, we can get that one there, there, and then there. So that's going to go in the center. Now I'm going to keep this straight. You might want to go at a bit of a jaunty angle. Let's go straight in the middle, just here. Then I'm going to go in with our postcard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly twist and bend it. And then within the center part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two layers of foam pads. So I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to do two. And then let's just give it an extra bend, take that one off, and then what we can then do is pop that in to the center. Now you could secure it with your adhesive if you want. I'm not, I'm going to leave that free flowing. If I tip this upwards just for a second, you see you've got that curve in that depth. So then all that we need to do is come in with these layers here. So let's add our sentiment, which is lots of love. That one can go on with a foam pad as well. Now this one, what I'm going to do is just tuck to the side. So let's go in with a smaller one here. And we've got a lot of layers that are over the edge that you can see here. And this is where it starts to draw the eye into the center. Let's bring in a little butterfly. Now for this butterfly, what I will do is add another tiny foam pad. So let's just chop this one. And I'm going to do a couple of snips here because we'll use the foam pads for the other stamped colored layers. That can go there. This one, what we're going to do is just come over that side and then I'm going to go in with my foam there. I'm going to go in with one at the top there and then there. I'm going to leave this part at the bottom here just overflowing at the base. And then two last pieces. Let's go in with our stamp. Let's go in with our last butterfly. So pop that one onto there. This butterfly can then just come into here. So then we've got one, two, three butterflies with a fourth one just way in the background. And then that one there, let's go in and I'm just going to underset that to our layer. And then there we go. We have lifted the layers when it comes to our seven by seven card blank. You could of course go completely flat. If I turn that to the side so you can see the depth of layers that you've got. I've used foam pads, you could use glue gels, or you can go along and just use your tacky glue, all purpose glue, tape runner, it's up to you. But that's what you can create when it comes to your butterfly and blooms from your Gemini Club.